If you are looking to increase your business sales and mindset, here today I'm going to talk about my top five business sales and mindset lessons that I took away from Grant Cardone's 10x interactive boot camp that was in 2021. Now, before I get stuck into the top five lessons that I took away from that, I'm Aaron Henriquez. I'm an online startup coach and scale up coach from the United Kingdom. I've been in business for like a couple of decades now doing that online. And I've and I've had success in starting up my businesses whilst I was still working full time as a police officer. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into this because it was an interesting one this year. The interactive boot camp exercise, if you haven't heard of it, it's a 10x conference hosted by Grant Cardone. And that exercise, the interactive boot camp, is a workshop that goes over three days. And he has literally these massive screens with thousands of people who are attending the, the boot camp all over it. And it's really interactive. People get involved. You get into all of your you go into little mini rooms and do all these exercises with people you've never met before. And I've connected with a ton of people on there through through that uh, interactive exercise, interactive boot camp, sorry. And it's something that if you haven't been to it yet, once you've heard these top five things, I'm sure that next year you are going to want to be going to the interactive boot camp when it's next hosted because it's such a superb event. You learn so much stuff. OK, so I'm going to go through my top five takeaways and those my top five takeaways would be different to other people's top five takeaways. But these are the ones that really, really resonated with me at the stage that I am at with my business and where I'm wanting to go for the future. So in no particular order, I'm going to start with my number one, which is writing goals down every single day and not just once per day but twice per day when you get up in the morning and when you go to bed at night. Now, we've all heard this about, you know, writing down your goals every day and this like positive affirmation type stuff. And I don't really buy into like the mumbo jumbo of sticking, you know, I don't know, notepads on a, on a wall or a five pound note or, you know, five dollar bill or whatever, wherever you're from on the wall and start praying to this five dollar bill that it's suddenly going to become like five million. I don't believe in that. But the writing down of goals is different, particularly in the way that Grant Cardone says it, uh, sort of teaches it. And that's because, um, you know, he's he's telling you to write it as if it's already happened. Now, I don't know if this is unique to Grant Cardone. I don't know if this is something he's picked up from someone else and is using. But I'm not going to try and pass this stuff off as my own, because this is something that I've learned from him from Grant Cardone, not just in this, I've heard it in his books that I've read as well, uh, his audio books. I'd recommend you listen to the audio books over the actual physical books if you can, just because he's actually reading it. So you get that tonality there if you don't really understand how how the guy works. So it, it it's basically reminding yourself that you've actually achieved these things and you're reminding yourself twice a day, every single day of the things that you actually want to get out of life and your business and whatever it is that you want to do. Now, where I said the goals are written like you've already achieved them, don't write it as in, I want to become a millionaire by the age of 30. I'm over 30, missed that. But don't write it like that, right? You know, you could write something, an example from my book. Here's my goal book right there. Well, those on the podcast, you can't see it, but anyone on YouTube, you can. So there's my goal book. And I write in that every day. And one of my goals in there, I've got seven goals in there. I'm not going to share them with you, but I'm going to share one of them with you. One of them is I've funded 12 flying scholarships for air cadets every year for the last five years. That's really specific. They want you to get really specific on what the actual goal is and you know, talking about like it's already happened. Now, I write that down twice a day. Sometimes I I admit sometimes I do forget or there's been times when I've been sort of feeling a bit shit, you know, if business hasn't really gone to plan and, you know, I've been a bit down and stuff like that. Sometimes I haven't written them down. And actually what he does teach, not just in this interactive boot camp, not just a 
10x interactive bootcamp but also across his audio books if you've listened to them is that is actually when you're feeling down and stuff like that that is the time when you really should actually be going into that goal book and writing about your goals and reading your goals and stuff like that to reaffirm why you're doing what you're doing why you're going through the struggles because it's easy just to walk away and go back to a nice cushy job and stuff like that but that's that that that's really it on the goals uh, section i thought that was really powerful it's something that i'm going to continue to do and you know one day i'm sure even if i don't hit the goals as they are and this is one more thing actually about the goal like i think one of his goals is like he wants to be able to connect with you know 7 billion people around the world now he knows that that's not even physically remotely in any way shape or form possible it isn't it just doesn't matter what what happens there is like the queen isn't known by 7 billion people around the world um you know it's it's just not possible but that's his goal right and if he gets 10% of that that is fabulous that is still fantastic you know so don't be scared about writing big goals too you know 10x is all about you know if you've got well this is what i think is about if you've got you know if your goal is to make a million in the next five years, then 10X that, put it to 10 million. 10X that again, put it to 100 million, whatever. If you get partway there, it's still great. Okay, so that's it on the goals. Now, my number two is something that really hit me in the face. It's like someone took a spade and just whacked me across the face. I'm gonna explain why. And it stopped worrying about the small things and the small costs, like these things don't matter. And that's because you're wasting energy on, you know, trying to save the pennies and being like, oh, look at me. You know, I've managed to save a few pennies on whatever. But you've just wasted two hours of your life or days of your life or weeks of your life in trying to do that. You know, people who when you're speaking about, you know, when you're negotiating a contract on something. And I don't know, you're trying to save five percent on the contract deal, but the other side is like sort of dug their heels in and you're sort of still trying to push and push and push you know this can happen in like property deals I'm actually going through I haven't actually started yet but I've got a couple of properties that I'm looking at now and I can see that it's already going to happen where with with certain vendors like certain owners of the properties where they're going to be um sort of reluctant to sort of drop their price in that and it's one of those things I've already thought about this is that, yeah, I'm going to put in the ask and stuff, but you know, what? I'm not going to waste that much time because I could spend six months negotiating with them, get nowhere. And during that six months, how much money rent could I have got from the property? Had I just spent a bit more money and, you know, I'm intending to keep them for years. So does it really matter? But in any case, let me get back on track here. It's about wasting the, you know, huge amounts of time to save small amounts of money or even like larger amounts of money. Like sometimes it's just not worth it. Now, I give you a story of mine where the reason why it felt like a spade whacked in the face, because instantly, instantly when he said it, when Grant Cardone was talking about worrying, stop worrying about these small things, I thought instantly back to the business that I started called Handler. It was a live chat software company um, that I started, I left the police for back in 2017. Now, we ended up having a supplier that was a really, really critical supplier. And I'm not going to go into all the details around it, but effectively, they really, really let me down. And it ended up, in a, you know, I got solicitors involved and then they were trying to like doing their back and forth bit, what they love doing. They love to charge you for that. Right. And it ended up basically in the high court where I was suing them for a lot of money that actually it, I should have known that they wouldn't have even had that. They wouldn't have even had that. And they tried every technique to drag it out. Now, before I knew it, I'd spent thousands and thousands of pounds. I'd spent untold amounts of my time. I just spat on my camera. It's disgusting. I just, I spent an amount, you know, untold amounts of my time trying to chase these guys and dealing with the solicitors as well. And for it to go into a court process that, actually ended up being at the end of that, like my solicitor was like, these guys are not gonna be able to afford it. We're gonna have to drop the claim a hell of a lot. I was running out of money at that time as well. And I was like, oh my God, like 
I was running out of money because it's all going into legals. It wasn't my attention wasn't being spent on actually the growing the business. And, you know, I ended up only actually recovering effectively what I'd spent in my legals, but I'd wasted over a year, guys and girls. I wasted over a year. OK, now that is a is a big problem because it, it got into the sort of thing of. That wasn't business mind there. That was sort of like, I'll show them type thing. I'm not letting them get away with, you know, costing me money type thing. Whereas what I should have done and what I now know, I mean, I, I learned a ton from that. Now, a couple of years on at the time, I wasn't feeling this way. But now a couple of years on, I'm actually glad I went through that process because it's it's taught me a hell of a lot as as a business owner in how to deal with contracts, how to deal with like legal matters and just generally how to approach the types of things that, you know, you don't know, you don't know. I keep saying that phrase, you don't know what you don't know, but it's just so true. But yeah, I mean, with, with that, I wasted so much time and had I, you know, had I had that, if I had I been on the interactive boot camp prior to that, I mean, I didn't even know of Grant Cardone at that point. I didn't even know he existed, never heard of the guy. But had I have been on the interactive boot camp or read any of his books because they were out, but I didn't I haven't discovered him at that point, then that is something that perhaps that would have gone a bit differently. OK, I may, perhaps I wouldn't have wasted that much time. I could have instead used the money I had and literally immediately engaged someone else to actually finish off the job because I had enough money at that point to do that. And I had enough time to do that, I had enough runway with that. But I didn't do that. Instead, I pursued this small cost sort of mentality and it when you, in the grand scheme of things it was a small cost because the bigger cost what happened is I lost the business the business couldn't function after that so that was hard that was really hard having to shut down a business that I'd worked so hard I hadn't worked so hard on something before as I had that and I'm not even going to say it's their fault because it's not their fault they're a supplier that screwed up, right? They screwed up big time, let me down big time, but I had options. My option could have been what I just said, go somewhere else. So I think that lesson number two, stop worrying about the small costs and the small things is so important. And if you are someone right now in your business that are looking at, you know, where you've got an issue with a supplier or something like that, you're trying to negotiate a deal and you're, you know, penny pinching and stuff like that. Forget it because you're just wasting your time. You could be progressing, moving on to bigger and better things than worrying about these small things. And don't worry about people, you know, if you feel like oh, someone's had you over, so what? Get rid of them. They, they'll do the same to someone else. They're bitter people, leave them, you know. And there was a guy on, on the, I think it was just from the audience, actually. Aaron Atwood, I wrote down his name in my notes when I was on this interactive boot camp, the 10X interactive boot camp, and his name is Aaron Atwood. And one of the things he said was, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this from my paper here. So once you reach a million a year, you understand you ain't done shit, okay? That's what he said. Once you reach a million a year, you understand you ain't done shit. Now, lots of us entrepreneurs, me included, you know, we are, sort of below a million a year, okay? Most entrepreneurs are below a million a year, by far. Some are below even 10 grand a year, like they don't have a business at that point um, and really struggling. And, you know, they, they'll be spending their energy on things like this, worrying about the really small things when actually there's so much more out there. So that's something actually I just reminded myself of as well when I'm going into like these investment deals with the properties. So, yeah, that that's my number two. Now, let me move in to my number three, but have a sip first. OK, so number three. Now, this one seems so obvious, right? But it's obvious until you are that business owner, like I have been, like I am probably right now, if I'm really honest, in some ways, is no leads, no sales. OK, now, no leads, no sales. It sounds well, uh, obviously if you haven't got leads coming in, well, you've got no sales. But then why is it so many business owners have no leads coming in? But they'll be they'll be like confused why they're not making any money. And they'll, but they'll be like, well, what are you doing to get leads? And they're like, oh, I 
posted something on Facebook and didn't get anything. I'm like, oh, right, OK. You know, so one of the things that Grant Cardone kept saying and he kept emphasizing this point and his guest speakers kept emphasizing this point and his, his site, you know, his, set, his second in command, Jared Glant. If you have if you don't know about Jared Glant, go and look him up. You know, he is he's a star in the making. He's Grant Cardone's like sort of second hand person, not second hand. You know what I mean? Like he's he's the top guy in Grant Cardone's organization. It appears anyway from the outside. That's what it appears he is. But anyway, marketing and promotion is senior to sales. So don't worry about being like the most perfect salesperson because you need to be able to market and promote yourself and your products and your your business, your personal brand over being able to sell. Keep those leads coming in because, you know, shit will stick, as they say. You know, they will eventually you will start getting sales if you keep those leads coming in. But what also happens if you keep those leads coming in is you're you're you've got lots of touch points. You're now increasing the volume that you're speaking to people and you get more comfortable and more natural around it. And eventually that will just start converting into more sales. And with those leads, you know, look at giving them sort of, you know, look at ways of reducing friction for them, like offering finance options. You know, if you've got like a really high ticket product, well, can that be spread out across a year for them to be able to pay that in a more affordable way or over three months instead of all at once, you know? So no leads, no sales. It's a really short one there, but it's just so obvious. And lots of entrepreneurs don't really focus on it. They don't have the leads coming in. They'll do everything else. You know, they, they won't, you know, if they're a B2B, they won't be on LinkedIn trying to speak to people. They won't be out there. I've got a VA right now. I've literally took on a VA two weeks ago. Her only job is to generate leads. I've got another VA. I've actually got three VA. I've not, I didn't have any, <laughs> I didn't have any assistance, right? And now I've got three. But a month ago, I didn't have any. So it's weird. But anyway, I've got one whose only job all day is to generate leads in two areas of my business. I've got another one who only job is to make calls to my previous clients, the case of clients who may have canceled over the years and also and also outbound calls to some of the leads that are being generated. And I've got another one that is sort of a bit more sort of gen, general who's doing like social media bits and will be helping me out on client calls and stuff like that. She's like really, really talented. So yeah, it's, you know, I've got those people doing their own individual tasks to sort of support me to be able to get those leads in so that I can then make the sales, you know, start booking these calls in to make these sales. So time will tell how that works out. Anyway, number four, asking tough questions, right? So tough questions people are scared of doing it because particularly British people, I think, I don't know, like I've been on Clubhouse. I don't know if any of you are on Clubhouse, but if you've been on Clubhouse, one thing I notice is if you, when there's a British audience, me included, well, most of the time me included, I tend not to be so much, I think because of my background being in the police, pretty direct sometimes. And people can say that's quite rude, but I'd rather I just tell you what is actually right or what I think is right rather than beating around the bush, giving this whole holistic point of view that at the end of it, you're like, hold on, what did they say? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I'd rather just tell you in five words if I can, rather than speak for 20 minutes, trying to answer your, your question. But asking these tough questions, it's about qualifying and seeing if you're speaking to the right people. Okay. Now, Grant Cardone and his team were speaking about this on the 10X Interactive Bootcamp. And some of the questions that were sort of coming out are sort of those questions that make people cringe, like literally cringe at asking people these things. Like, do you have the money? Do you have the money? Like, no one likes to be put in that position. They don't like to be like, oh, no, I can't afford it. No one likes to feel that way, do they? But for you as a business owner, what is the point in speaking to someone who doesn't have the money? Like, if you're selling a product that's 10 grand and someone hasn't got like a tenner to, to spend, or their mind is not even there to be able to spend a tenner, which is another question, you know, then what's the point in having them there? Now, back onto that, like where their mind isn't there, have you invested at this level before? Have you bought, have you invested, have you bought a product or service or something like that 
similar product or service at this level before, at this price point before. Name the price at at ten thousand dollars, at a hundred thousand dollars, whatever it is, pounds. You know, have you invested at that level before? Okay, because if they haven't, then you know you're. You know, if they have, you know you're speaking to someone who's potentially more comfortable in in sort of making investments at that level. Whereas if someone hasn't and you find out what type of level they have or they may have never invested at all at that level, you might understand where this conversation is going. OK, who makes the decision? Who makes the final decision? Find out early doors. Who are the decision makers? Because at the end, when it comes to the end of the conversation and you put your ask in, OK, if you've already find, found out that actually they're the only decision maker, they can't then make up that excuse right at the end of the conversation and say, oh, I need to go and speak to my partner or you know, oh, I've got to speak to my business partner or oh, I've got to speak to the bloody tooth fairy or something like that, you know, to, a, about making a decision. It's, you know, this is what people are like because they're uncomfortable about something else. That's not their true. That's not often not their true reason. I'm not here to give you a sales sort of topic on the, uh, like sales training right now on that. But that's often not their true objection. OK, and we'll get into some others which are really like, oh, that's so cringeworthy. But. Asking people, putting them on the spot like that, often you will get real answers if you do it. And just don't worry about feeling like you're crossing a line. Yeah, when people are saying things like it's too expensive, I mean, it's sort of off topic, but, you know, agreeing with them, you know, it puts them off track. You know, if, if you if someone says it's too, you know, oh, it's too much money and you're like, yeah, I agree with that. I agree with you. It is too much money. People are immediately they weren't expecting that. What they were expecting is for you to try and justify why it is. But it puts them off track. And then when you hit them with something else, they're sort of like their mind is thinking about their mind is over there. And, you know, you're then hitting them with other stuff. And they're already confused at that point, which is great, because then you can keep moving on with the conversation and f knock out their sort of, you know, it's too expensive sort of thing. And one of the things that Grant Cardone said is like if people are saying it's too expensive is show them an even higher price product. Once they've said that, show them an even higher price product and offer that to them. <laughs> it seems so bizarre. I haven't tried that yet. In fact, I have once. I have actually tried that once. And uh, I mean, it didn't it didn't end up closing the sale, but the person actually seemed more receptive to the original offer that I made them. And they said they were going to go ahead, but they actually then didn't. I kind of kicked them off of my list for all sorts of other reasons. But yeah. So anyway. Moving on, uh, other, other tough questions that could be asked is like, how much money do you have right now? That's really personal, right? But it's important. Can they afford your service? How much money do you have access to right now? How much do you believe in what I'm saying? That is one which is probably going to knock out, you know, see what some of the real objections are, because how much do you believe, like, do they think you're just talking shit to them and they're humoring you by giving you some time? Or do they actually believe in you? Do they believe in what you're saying? And don't ask, do you believe what I'm saying? Because they're just going to say, yeah. How much do you believe what I'm saying? They have to give you an answer, right? Don't ask a closed question there. That's what Grant Cardone kept saying, you know. How much do you believe in what I'm saying? Do they you know, particularly if they're just like, uh-huh, 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 sort of thing. And then the best question of all that I took away from this that is so important and something that I've now introduced into all of my sales conversations I have with people is, have you seen enough to make a decision? I feel really bad even sharing that with you because that is Grant Cardone's, like, power thing. I've, no, I've not heard anyone say that to me before. But I think that is such a powerful question, because if they have seen enough to make a decision, if they say yes, OK, now they've got to give you a decision. Is it yes or is it a no? If they if they're a bit like or unsure. Then there's other objections that they've got, there are other things that they don't quite understand that you now as a salesperson need to go in there and find out what is it? Go and knock out those objections. Right. OK, so that's something. The most powerful question of all, and I'll say it again, have you seen enough to make a decision? Excellent question. Everyone's sales script should have it in there. And that is Grant Cardone. So I'm going to definitely give him that. And if you do sort of like put that on your blog or anything like that going forward, 
you know, if you're using it in your own things, you know, give Grant Cardone credit for that because that's where I got it from. Never heard, I've been in lots of sales calls, never heard anyone say it before. And I think it's so powerful. Right, so the last thing, most important, I guess, for you guys and girls, particularly those starting out around your personal brand and your business is be the best known. Be the best known, okay. Now, why is that important? Hold on. Yeah, so why is that important about being the best known? Okay, so it's about being omnipresent. You might hear Grant Cardone, if you're familiar with him, saying about omnipresence. You'll hear lots of other people regurgitating that as well about omnipresence. I think a lot of people take that from Grant Cardone and they're sort of trying to implement it. And that is by being everywhere for everything. You know, if you've got a press opportunity on something that is nothing to do with you, find a way that you can sort of, in a way, you know, find some way that you can sort of talk about this topic in a way that relates to you. Like there's always a way to do it. Some of the best PR agents out there, they will have random people on things and you're like, why are they there? It's because they've got great PR agents who are just like, yeah, let's get them in there and we'll niche it up into this. But yeah, so be the best known, not the best at what you do. OK, so most people think it's most important to be the perfectionist, the, you know, being the absolute best at what you do. And by being the best at what you do means that you will get the most customers coming through. And that's not true. I don't think that's true at all, actually. I mean, this isn't new news to me, but I think it's so important. That's why I wanted to end on it for people, because having an MVP, so minimum viable product versus perf uh, perfection I would always go with the MVP, get the MVP out there and you can work on it as you're going. OK, but there's no point being the best at what you do, having the most perfect product or most perfect service. If nobody knows you, what's the point? Like, do, does that make sense? Right. Like, why would you do that? Why would you have work endless amount of time and hours and spend endless amount of energy on perfecting this thing? But nobody knows you. You're not getting it out there to people. So speed to market is what Grant Cardone was saying. Get your idea. Make the offer. Tweak as you go. That is what the 10x interactive boot camp with Grant Cardone was saying is get it out there. OK, then after you've got it out there, you can automate it and you can scale it. OK, don't worry about the mistakes. Don't worry about, you know, if you piss people off along the way. Don't worry about if you've, you know, over over you know over promised or whatever you know he keeps saying about over promise and over deliver sometimes it's not possible right but even if you you know if you've over promised or whatever you can work through all this stuff don't worry about the one bad review who cares like literally you know one of my businesses is a which is a franchise there's some people in that they care way too much about the bad reviews i couldn't care less to be honest with you you know when i say i couldn't care less i mean i couldn't care less in the fact that I'm not like, oh, we've got one bad review. We need to go and do everything possible and spend endless amounts of hours to get that one review reversed sort of thing, because it's going to suddenly lose a thousand customers. It's not true. It's just not true. And I, I can say because we've got competitors that have come from nowhere that have been around literally for two or three years. They've got a shit ton of bad reviews. OK, but they've blown up way bigger than we have. OK, because they're all about just getting out there they are out there they don't, their service isn't the best at all ours is way better our actual service being delivered is way better and our customer service is infinitely better okay infinitely better but they are way bigger and they've only been around a few years okay and it's not just one that's done that there's multiple and they've all got crap terrible reviews and yet they still get way 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 more customers than we do okay and there's a reason for that because okay, they're not worried about being the best at what they do. They worry. They're more concerned about being the best known, getting out there, you know, having masses and volumes of customers rather than being the best at just for a few. OK, so that is what I would say are my top five takeaways from Grant Cardone's 10x interactive boot camp that was in 2021. If you haven't seen it before, go and search for it on Line edge. In fact, I'm going to put the 
notes. I'm going to put the links in the show notes so that you'll be able to find out when the next ones are. I also put links to Grant Cardone's website and over to his over to his ebooks as well, because one not ebooks over his books and audio books, because one of the ones that I think is my top ones, I'm actually going to be doing an episode on my top audio books. But one of the ones that I think are his best ones that he's done is Be Obsessed or Be Average. It's a fantastic book if you want a bit of motivation out there. So I'd suggest that you go and get it. Yeah, so I'd suggest you go and get Be Obsessed or Be Average. Um, and yeah, so that that's my top five takeaways. And if you like this, if you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to hear more from me and also share this out with other people, you know, we want to get this out to as many people as possible. We're just talking about being omnipresent, not being the best at what I do. I don't have the most polished podcast, do I? I mean, I don't edit it. I might cut off a bit at the start and a bit at the end. Other than that, I haven't got the time to be doing that. I could probably get one of my VAs to do it. But actually, I like just the more raw nature of how I'm delivering it. There's no fancy jingles or fancy intro music. OK, nothing like that. I'm just talking to you as me um, about the stuff that I've learned, stuff that I'm learning along the way, the problems that I've had along the way and, you know, solutions that, you know, things that you can take away that will help you in your business and your startup and your life just generally. You know, so that's that that's where I want to be. And so with that, I would like to get this podcast out there to more people and you could really help to do that. There's two ways you could help to do that. OK, the first way is to actually leave a review. So if you could leave a five star review, don't just click the five stars, but actually write a review. Just write a few. It doesn't have to be long. Just a few words on why you think, you know, the, this episode, maybe your best takeaway from this episode. You know what was good about it? You know why you took something away from that? And the reason why I'd ask for a review is because the more reviews a podcast gets, you know, the higher up the Apple and the other platforms will show your podcast. That means it reaches more people. OK, so that's what I would ask from you. I'm giving up my time definitely to sort of provide some value to you. That is some that is one way that you can do that. The other way would be to like take a screenshot on your app of the actual podcast of this episode or click on the share button. So every podcast platform that I know of has a share button to share this episode like on your Twitter or on your Facebook, you know, if you've got in, if you've got your Instagram stories, obviously they can't click on the link unless you've got that swipe up thingy. But yeah, so that that's another way you can do that. Now, something else that I'd like you to do so that you can sort of interact with this podcast more and sort of get more from it about, you know, more of the stuff that you want to hear. OK, that's important. I'm not doing this just for me. I'm doing this for you. And for anyone else that's listening to help you to grow your business, because I want to help, you know, I really want to help people to start up online. There are ways that it can be done, OK, to have a sustainable online business. I don't do any of these, you know, these gimmicks from some of these like top influencers. And if you speak, I love Grant Cardone's methods because he's so direct with it. He doesn't have any of these stupid what I call stupid. I, in fact, it's probably wrong of me to say that he doesn't have any of these like, you know, fancy sort of phraseologies or fancy scripts or something like that to go by. Like, you know, he's more blunt and just honest than the vast majority of the influences out there. That's why I like his approach. But I don't just take his approach. I listen to everyone. But I like to just help people with ways that actually work for them today rather than trying to come out with this ridiculous sort of script or like tonality stuff. So I would like you to also follow me on Instagram. OK, so that's where I hang out the most. You can get me on LinkedIn as well. My name is Aaron Henriquez. But if you go on Instagram, my Instagram handle, in fact, all my handles on social media is Aaron Henry. That's A-A-R-O-N-H-E-N-R-A-Y. Follow me on Instagram and send me a DM. Send me a DM saying what you would like to know, the types of things that you would like to see on the podcast. Or if there was something from this, that this episode that you took away, which was really helpful to you, that you can implement into your business, then I would love to hear from you as well. OK, you're welcome to tag me in any of your stories. If you do have you put any up, if anything in this has inspired you. 
tag me, tag Grant Cardone as well in this because this is his stuff. This isn't my stuff. You know, I've, I'm not hidden that. I'm not trying to pass this off as mine. This is stuff that I've learned from Grant Cardone and his team, okay, and his network of people, you know, his guest speakers, all right? So this is the 10X stuff from Grant Cardone's interactive boot camp. But follow me on Instagram. It's Aaron Henry, A-A-R-O-N-H-E-N-R-A-Y. And if you would like any help in like starting or you know automating your own online business, you know, go onto my Instagram. You've got to follow me first. OK, the reason is, is because I've turned off this filtering thing. Right. So basically anyone could message me before. And what would happen is that I would get messages a lot from like crypto people and, you know, just people like spamming, spamming me. And it was starting to really piss me off, if I'm honest with you. So I turned that off where the only people who can message me are people who already follow me. OK, you can. Also, that's not special to me. It's not special to my account. You can do that on your own Instagram as well. So you need to follow me on Instagram. Aaron Henry, that's A-A-R-O-N-H-E-N-R-A-Y. And if you'd like any help with starting up or automating your own online business, so that you've got a sustainable online business, DM me the word online and I will send you a link to some of the information that I have out there and online video training that you can access so that you can start your own journey and starting to either start or automate your online business sales. OK, so I've been Aaron Henriquez. Hopefully you've enjoyed the top five business sales and mindset lessons that I took away from Grant Cardone's 10X Interactive Bootcamp in 2021. And until next time, you take care.